anyone. Welcome to Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, where we explore the world of innovation, creativity, and intellectual property. I'm your host, Wayne Carroll, and I'm excited to bring you insights and stories from inventors, entrepreneurs, and experts in the field. Now, before we get started, I want to make it clear that while I am an attorney, the information I provide on this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only. I'm not providing legal advice, and nothing in this podcast should be construed as creating an attorney-client privilege or relationship. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's dive into the world of intellectual property, patents, and innovation. Join me on this journey as we explore the power of innovation and inspiration and how to turn your ideas into reality. We are still in the week one of where we cover from IP confusion to IP clarity understanding what inspirations can and cannot be protected. And we are, um, today, this is season or episode two, and we are going to talk about getting your IP strategy in harmony with your business strategy for maximum success. So let me tell you a story. I was talking to an inventor and they wanted to know what their patent covered because they weren't really sure. I didn't write the patent, um, somebody else did. And when I looked at it and I explained what the patent covered, they were surprised and they wondered how did that get in the, the patent? They, they didn't even feel like they told that to their patent attorney. Um, and the variation where the claims covered didn't actually cover the product that they were producing. So their patent, or if somebody copied their product that they were producing, their patent wouldn't actually cover it. So that was a, a sad uh, news that I had to give that inventor, but it was better that they knew where they were at uh, so that they could go forward and how they invested in it and and with their their strategy for their business. So it's important for you to learn how to communicate with your business and, and communicate your business strategy with your attorney, um, any attorney you're working with in your business, especially your patent attorney or trademark attorney. And you want to learn what questions to ask to find out if your intellectual property protection matches your strategy. So patent rights only cover what's in the claims. And when you write a patent, or when I write a patent, the, the way I go about it is I look at what should be claimed. Um, I write, we write the claims first. We, we sketch out what's the general idea, but then we dive into the claims. What is it we want protected? And the way a patent claim works is that uh, it typically has multiple elements, um, either physical elements or steps in a process. Um, so either way, there's physical elements or steps. And suppose there's four different steps. Uh, for a process, step one, step two, step three, and step four. And when you look whether or not your patent covers, it only covers someone that does all four of those steps. If someone leaves out one, they're not infringing your patent. Your patent doesn't cover it. Same with a product. Um, if it has four structures or four parts, um, and how they interact, it will only cover the a product that has those four parts. Now, if somebody adds more parts, they're still infringing if they have those four. But if they take one away, then they're not infringing. So a patent, you want it to be as the claims as short as possible. 
with as few elements as possible. But this is a challenge because um, when you have it short, what the patent office is doing is they're they're examining your patent and they're trying to decide, has this been done before? If you make it too broad, they say, look, that broad thing with only these two steps has been done before. You can't get a patent. So we have to narrow it enough so that you can get a patent. But if we narrow it too much, then you it's very hard to enforce your patent because someone can look at the patent and easily step away from one thing. And so sometimes inventors think it's great that all these things are in their claims. Um, and that's actually not necessarily great. You only want in the claims what is necessary. So think of your minimum viable product. Uh, and that's, you know, in, in other areas of, of business, you're going to want to learn if you don't know about minimum viable products. But that's a really good exercise to learn what should go in your claims. What are the bells and whistles that you don't need that somebody could actually compete with you without those bells and whistles? Um, you don't want those in your claims. Now, what we do is we actually have claims of varying um, scope. They're more narrow. And so they're kind of backup positions. And we, we'll go into later about why we need multiple claims and backup positions. Um, now, the other thing about a patent is when you, when, when we, after we write the claims, we write, we, we create drawings that are going to be showing and describing what's in the claims. A patent application has to describe how to make and use the invention. So that somebody that is skilled in that technology area, uh, and if it's a simple invention, it can be someone with, might be someone with very simple skills. If it's very complex, um, like a, like a turbine engine, then it's going to be someone with a lot more education to understand that. But that's that's who your patent application is actually supposed to be written for. But you do want to remember that if it's enforced, if you need to enforce your patent, it also needs to be written for a jury. So um, those are some of the challenges of, of writing a patent application that as a patent attorney, I... I guide my clients through. And along that journey, I want to know what is their goal. And I also make sure that I get updates on what it is because they're, they might pivot slightly. Uh, they might dis discover or, or decide that one direction they had started in wasn't the best one. So I make sure we constantly check in on the strategy at each step along the process. And it is a multi-step process. And we'll, we'll talk more about the patent process. Um, so if we put too much, if we just talk about everything in the world in the patent application, and, and we're not focused on what's in those claims, then when the patent gets granted, um, it gets published. And a lot of times it gets pump published before it's granted. And if there are ideas in there that aren't covered by the claims, you've given away those ideas. You won't be able to patent them anymore, and anybody can use those. So we also don't want the scope of your patent to be, in terms of what's discussed, too broad. And that's why we draft the claims first, so we can really focus the patent application on what the rights that you're trying to achieve. Um, another thing to understand is um, that how trademark works. Um, and with your business strategy, uh, when you're selecting a trademark or you're looking of, of how to use your trademark, trademarks cover not just exactly the same name on the same products. It covers it, it's a number of factors. The, the biggest factor is how similar are the trademarks. 
well, there's really top three that kind of work together. How similar are the trademarks? How strong is the brand? And how similar are the goods and services? So um, someone can have very similar goods and services, and there's enough similarity in their trademark, even though it's not the exact same, and consumers might be confused. There's a bunch of other factors, and, and we're going to go into that later. But those are really the top three to consider, and that your trademark needs to distinguish from somebody else's. So words that are just describing what is offered or that are generic for what is being offered, those words aren't going to distinguish. Oftentimes, trademarks have parts that distinguish and parts that describe to help with marketing. Um, so that's, that's what your, that's what trademarks cover. Copyrights protect original creative content, and it does not cover the ideas that are expressed in the content. And trade secrets are only enforceable against those with signed contracts unless there was some security breach to obtain the trade secret. Um, if you have a patent, I encourage you to review the claims of your pending or granted patents and review your trademarks to see what part of it is really distinguishing you and are there parts of it that are more generic. You want to re review your security around your trade secrets and the contracts that you have with anyone that has access to your trade secrets. Your security needs to be reasonable for your trade secret to be enforceable. So I encourage you to take five minutes to write down what you want your intellectual property to accomplish. That way you can discuss that with your attorney and use that to guide how you protect your intellectual property. Of course, in the first episode, we discussed what is your intellectual property, I encourage you to write that down. And so now look at that list and write down what you want your intellectual property to accomplish. I'm Wayne Carroll with Leveraging Inspiration, the Inspired Patent Podcast, and I look forward to seeing you next time.